Welcome again to The Modern Moron. You know, since there's so much love and unity in this country right now, both socially and politically, I think we'll take a break from politics and news headlines. Don't worry, all the toxic, chaotic issues going on will be right there and waiting for you in less than half an hour. I promise they will not go away. I should never have waited a month to get to this interview with writer, performer, producer, Larry Dorn. He has spent the recent past working on a very popular show on the Cartoon Network's Adult Swim called Mike Tyson Mysteries. If you don't know about this show, shame on you. But you're also in my 50-plus demographic, so it's to be expected. You have to know about former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson, even if you don't follow sports. I'm sure you know about the Scooby-Doo franchise. In fact, we had the recent voice of Shaggy, Will Forte, on the show a few weeks ago. Imagine taking the concept of the Scooby-Doo mystery machine, you know the van, only instead of putting mystery machine on the side of the van, you put Mike Tyson's iconic face tattoo. Instead of Velma, you have Mike Tyson's 15-year-old adopted Korean daughter, for which you create zero justification or backstory as to how he adopted a 15-year-old Korean daughter. Throw in an effeminate ghost who happens to dress in Dickensian wardrobe, add a sexist, womanizing alcoholic pigeon, voiced by Norm MacDonald, and you have Mike Tyson Mysteries. It's a very funny and obviously odd show, and you should check it out. We talked to Larry about writing on the show with his two partners, Rachel Ramris and Hugh Davidson, who I'm pretty sure I can get on this prestigious podcast at some point. We talked to Larry about how life has been for him and his family during the pandemic quarantine, even though we recorded this about a month ago. Oh, are we calling this a pandemic still or is it a plandemic now? Isn't that an adorable name? I think so, too. We also talk about a trip Larry took with his associates to Comic-Con one year in San Diego. And if you just said to yourself, comic a what? It's Comic Con, short for comic book convention, which includes all types of animation. You know, for nerds and dorks. Actually, nerds and dorks like me. By the way, if you've never been to a comic book convention, you are missing out on some wonderful people watching. And by people watching, I mean staring at freaks, nerds, and geeks. I mean they want you to stare at them. It's okay, go ahead. They dress up for you to look at them. I'm sure there's one near you, and you must put it on your bucket list. It's better than a freak show at the county fair, yet oddly similar. We start our conversation reminiscing about our performing days at the Groundlings Theater in Los Angeles. Larry liked to put up autographed headshots of himself in the dressing area, and I remind him of that. Enough for me. Let's get to it. Can you tell I'm excited? It's an animated visit with Larry Dorff and a great Mike Tyson Comic-Con story on The Modern Moron. Thanks for listening. I did see you the last time I was in LA, but it was it was like a more of a sighting than actually being with you. I saw you at where was that? At Steve uh, at Little? No, it was at, at Hugh and Rachel's. Remember, I was I was oh, priming cool. the inside of the garage, and you were kind of just sitting there in the backyard. I think it, I was, it was, it was there for a second. Yeah, it was. It, we really didn't even get to talk. Ah, well, here we are now. I probably didn't have anything interesting to say. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I feel like you always have something interesting to say. I don't know. I listened to you do a, oh, this was a long, long time ago, but you and Margie McGee uh-huh. did a podcast that Drew Drogi was doing a podcast. Yeah. And the two of you were on and you said something so typical of you. You asked how you were doing. How, <laughs> how are we doing? And then, and okay. Drew said, oh, you're both doing fine. And you said something else and you said, but who's winning? <laughs> like between you and Margie. <laughs> One thing I want to tell you that I pre- have always appreciated about you. Yeah. I've always felt like I could give, and I have given you a pretty hard time. Do you think I have, I give you a pretty hard time? I don't think, I, I feel like it's all done uh, in with love. I don't think it's a. a okay. Hard, oh, good. Yeah. Then, then it's received in the manner that it's given, but yeah. I just have to stop and call you out on things like what it, What's going on in your head that the recurring thing was when we would dress backstage uh-huh. next to each other sometime in our dressing areas, which are pretty crowded little areas, right? Mm-hmm. Around in, in your dressing area. And yet you always made room for an autographed copy of your own headshot. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Why, why, why did you, why? I, that's a great question. I think. Um, well, I'm asking it. Yeah. 
Is this part of the pod? Are we on? Is Shoot, this abs- why not? Why not? I mean, it's not like we're live. I can cut it out if oh. if you say something hideous. Um, why do I, uh, why, why, did why did I, you do that? Uh, and do you still do that? Um, I still, you know, when I'm bored and I doodle, uh, I don't really do shows anymore. So I don't really have the, the opportunity to do that. So I don't know if I would do that anymore, but I still, I've always had a uh, fascination with this, uh, my autograph and I still, when I'm doodling, I will sign my name or sign other people's name. Really? Yeah. So it was, it was more about practicing your autograph. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Did Maybe you, I did, it like a good, uh, like a kind of a Broadway e kind of thing. Did you think, man, this is going to be worth something someday? So I better put a little effort into it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe hoping. Maybe hoping. Okay. You know what? I've done the same thing, but I wouldn't tape it up for everyone to see. I had the common decency yeah. to hide my ego. Yeah. No, I think. Um, I kind of like that you did that, though. Yeah. Maybe I liked. I liked maybe that some people maybe were bothered by it. <laughs> you like you were a bit of a provocateur yeah maybe a little bit of a provocateur i like it yeah another thing that comes to mind immediately is i recently saw on facebook which you do not participate in facebook at all or are do you have a- facebook yeah. i go to um is like a voyeur i don't um i don't post anything i don't um comment or like anybody's things I just go there Got it. a lot. To look. Okay. So I find out about you through Sam. Okay. And yeah. she had oh. a little video on. Uh huh. And you were giving instruction to your two sons about uh-huh. how to clean the house and how to basically take care of cleaning the coffee table. And was recording it. And I got the vibe that you were really into the procedure for making a clean house. And this is what you do first you spray the spray and you wipe it down. And I got the feeling that neither of your sons were really taking you very seriously. What a loser. Yeah. And wasn't and knew that that was. So I better. She thought I'm going to record this because these guys aren't going to listen to their father. <laughs> was that was that accurate or. I think she recorded it because she thought it was funny that they weren't uh, listening or taking me seriously. Is that a common theme? Uh, yeah. That your does parenting. Happen. Yeah. Go. That does happen. Yeah. But they just like, we're not listening to dad. He's just yeah. like, yep. That's pretty, that's pretty common. That's pretty standard. But however, there must be some point where it's like, you know what? Uh oh, dad's putting his foot down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what is the, what's the telltale sign of that? Oh, she doesn't record those. Those get, uh, oh, yeah. Those get, uh, dad gets, dad gets heated. Dad gets a little Steve Piercy. God damn it. And what are the tells? Like, what are the, when do the boys know? Uh oh. We've been ignoring dad and we better knock it off. I like, bet it's um, like, what's the telltale sign for the kids? Probably a yell. I, I yell. I get everyone. Really? Attention. Yeah. I yell too. But sometimes I might just get real quiet. And then that's. Oh, that could be worse. Probably more effective. Yes. Yeah. Like hard to control it. Mm-hmm. Does that happen often? God damn it. Let's hit the I yell all the God time. Damn it. it does. Ha- it ha- I mean, this is quarantine. It's. It does happen. Is it getting to you? Uh, it's kind of getting to all of us. I mean, we're all, I mean, you know, I don't have a big house, you know, so we're all kind of on top of each other. There's four, four people. I'm, I only have one and a half people. Yeah. Yep. And I'm how kind do, of a, how do you do it? a what hermit. Is, how does that work? Well, I'm a hermit anyway. Uh-huh. So this really, I, got no life. I mean, I'll have my bad days, but I can go a whole weekend and not see anybody. Yeah. I'm fine with that. It's just the kids get bored. Mm-hmm. And then you say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And then they don't want to right. the no. So then they'll make up games where they are wrestling or tackling each other. Uh-huh. And they'll be having a great time doing that. And then within five minutes, someone will get hurt and they'll start fighting. How old are they? Eight and 10. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Are they in public school? Public school. And how is the school district handling that? Are they back at school or is it still like, we don't know what's going to happen yet? No, it's, uh, they're, oh, that's they brutal. Get, uh, they'll do a zoom call with their teachers for like 45 minutes. The whole class or just the two of them? Uh, the, with the whole, with, you know, each of their teachers. With the so whole they class. are doing some schooling. Yeah. And then they have a little bit of work to do after that. So they probably have maybe 90 minutes a day of of doing and then that. another 90 minutes of homework or, or no, probably 90 minutes total. I would say of stuff to do. And then the rest of it, that's LAUSD. That's the, 
<laughs> and then the rest of it is uh, chaos. You know, I've been working, so, uh, you know, writing with you and Rachel. So it's just trying to, f let's get some educational things for them to do or just mm -hmm. something to keep them busy. And that's just it, it, very hard. How is, is she working right now? I know she's she, very active. She's kind of an activist yeah, almost. Very right? Very active. Yeah. She does a lot of volunteering stuff. She's very mm -hmm. active. With, uh, Moms Demand Action. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the PTA president. So she's got a lot of stuff going on. And this has put a crimp on that. Yeah. To some degree. Yeah. And it's frustrating yeah. for her as well. So she went on, yeah, she went on strike this last weekend. Strike from what? From uh, being a mom. Who's ready? Did she enough. Enough. physically leave? What, what uh, was no? You just she's like I'm done. I'm I'm out. See what happens, Larry. This weekend, she because he can't really go. So she did leave. She's like I'm just gonna go for a drive. And then it's like where are you gonna go? Right. And there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to drive to. So what did she do? Drive around the block and come home? Or she came home and uh, you know it was just she was off duty but at home. Okay. So was the directive sort of leave mom alone for a couple of yeah. days? Yeah. Yeah, Got she's it. off. And then, you know, they would they would need something from her, ask her for something. Sorry, I'm on strike. You are not mature enough. <laughs> I'm on strike. Yeah. Wow. Was she on strike in the bedroom as well? <laughs> you, need, you don't need to go there. That would be just from my personal bad. Oh, bad connection. <laughs> That's a good husband. You're, you're taking the high road. That's good. Take the high road. Is she back now? She's back. Strike's over. Oh, good. Oh God, yeah. that's great. That's good news. Oh, yeah. Can we talk about your work? Do you not want to talk about work because that sure. takes away your anonymity? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we could talk. We could talk about anything. You're a writer for Mike Tyson Mysteries. Well, I was a writer for Mike Tyson Mysteries. Mike Tyson Mysteries has now been, it's not a show anymore. It's canceled. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. That's a great show. Yeah. Adult Swim. Fun. Yeah, it was very fun. It was a funny show. Yes. Yeah, but it's all done. How many seasons did you guys do? Four seasons. That's a good run. Yeah, that's a great run. And like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a bummer. Are you guys working on, because you guys, are you guys, would you consider yourself a, a team? We are a team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have a couple of other things that we're working on. Can't talk about them or can? You know, there's probably no no rule that I can't, but I, I think it jinxes it. I don't want to don't jinx, want to jinx it. it type of the, yeah. I don't want to look yeah, back. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to listen back to this and be like, see, shouldn't have uh -oh, shouldn't have said that. This is why you don't talk about it. Okay, that's fine. We'll go back, but I hope I get a chance to talk to your other collaborators, Hugh and Rachel. Yeah, yeah. Did you work with Mike Tyson personally a lot, or is that mostly Hugh? It was mostly Hugh. Yeah, I did right. um, maybe a couple of times. And what was that like? Well, <clears throat> it was uh, the most amount of time I spent with him was at Comic-Con one year. Right. In San Diego. I heard you guys had to go down there once and he didn't show up. That was, uh, I didn't, I was in Hawaii then. And uh, Hugh uh, and Rachel just went. That must and, have been uh, brutal because nobody's yeah. showing up, you know, love you guys, but let's face it. The, the no folks want to see Mike Tyson. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he was there when I was there, and it was like being with, because Mike Tyson's one of those people that it's like, you're not, he's like one of the most famous, recognizable people around. Like, you, he's got a tattoo on his face. Like, no one's like, is that Mike Tyson? And one of the first people to do that. Right, right. So it was very strange being, I mean, it was like you're in secret entrances to all these hotels, and you're... You're being, uh, you know, shuttled around on a golf cart. Mm -hmm. So it was, that part was very interesting. And like, as soon as we would go outside on this golf cart, swarms of people just like, oh my God, taking pictures and everything. Right, right. Um, and and I how, he, I was, how is he about that? Is he, he, he kind of- uh, is sort of, um, he kind of shuts off. Mm -hmm. He's uh, He's very nice. He also just totally turns off, like he'll fall asleep instantly. You know, he's very sweet, but then you also think, well, he could kill me at any moment. Probably. He, <laughs> well, he like has a to... lion, like a, like a tame, yes. like an old lion that could. He's well, disengaged he, you know, for the better yeah. of everyone, including himself. But he's still a lion. I heard him do an interview with uh, Joe Rogan, who has a podcast, uh -huh. not nearly the podcast that this is, but whatever. And uh, Joe Rogan, who's, you know, he's an MMA guy, he does the color commentary for MMA. And mm -hmm. he was calling him champ. And it's like man, do you ever just get back into the gym and just want to hit the heavy bag? And, and he was so excited 
and you could tell Mike was not, um, no, I don't do that. He doesn't want to reconnect with that part of his life anymore. Uh -huh. He doesn't want to reconnect with anything violent. It's just mm -hmm. not good for him. Yeah, and but I have seen him. That. But you have I've seen him seen what? Him, uh, I've seen him uh, where he's like, you know, punching, just like doing like little moves. Like shadow boxing? Yeah, and he's still so, so fast. Really? Incredibly fast. And you um, just see that and go, oh my God, the power behind those punches is, is, is unreal. Incredible. He's so big. He's like my height and I'm not a tall person. I'm, you know, I'm like a, a, a Jewish 5'10", which is like 5'8". And he's fighting guys that were, you know, 6'3", <laughs> 6'4". Six, six, yeah, but he's so thick. Yeah. He's like as wide as he is uh, tall. He's like a, oh, man. A, a, a cube. And when he was doing that shadow boxing stuff, it was just yeah. for, for fun, just kind of goofing fun, around. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What makes him like What makes him laugh? Does he laugh? Is he easy uh, an easy laugher or pretty serious uh, person? In the mood. Hugh would make him laugh. He liked Hugh, um, but then sometimes he's just not in the mood to laugh, and he's just like in a he, he could be in a in one of those moods, right? And you have to read that. I remember he he doesn't drink. He's not supposed to drink anymore. You know, <clears throat> he doesn't drink, or he's and, not uh, supposed to drink. He's not supposed to. Okay. Okay. And uh, neither so am I. He has this handler, and uh, his name is David. And when we were at Comic Con, it was Ramadan, and David, uh, you know, is a you know observes Ramadan. So he David wasn't eating at all during the day. So as soon as we got, to, there was this party, and it had just become sunset. And David is supposed to be the guy that just watches. He's it's his handler. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. make sure nothing happens to Mike Tyson. Keep him out of trouble. Yeah. Exactly. So we get to this party and David takes off because there's food out and he wants to eat. Right. Because the sun's gone down and he hasn't eaten all day. Exactly. So now we're responsible for Mike Tyson. Shut the front door. Uh-oh. And uh, Yeah. And Mike. Uh, He's not a kid. He's not a no, child. But, but still. Mike wants a Hennessy and Coke. As soon as, as soon as David walked away. As soon as, yeah. Yeah. He knows the leash is off. Yeah. So uh, another guy. Uh, executive at, at Warner Brothers, just like just, I'll just get him a, get him, get him what he wants. So we had it. We drink, drank the first one instantly. Got a second <laughs> one, and for I'm the same at, at, at one point, it was just me and him. He kind of had me cornered, and he was talking to me, kind of like a, someone who had just like, um, you know, like when you're like maybe 16, you smoke a little pot for the first time, and uh, you're like, oh my god, the universe, it's, it's. There's more to it than this. You know, like you have that realization. Well, you're having a deep this conversation with Mike Tyson? Yeah, like the, the this, this, like as though you're talking to someone who's just for the first time realizes maybe this isn't it. And I was talking to him and it was like he was having, he was trying to get really deep with me, but it wasn't deep. It wasn't really deep at all. But for him, he was as though he hadn't thought about, this sounds terrible, but it's like he hasn't thought about like the universe and like maybe we're not alone. And he was like kind of tripping himself out. Yeah. And I was kind of go along with it. Like, yeah, that, that it, maybe we're not. Yeah, that's why oh, I never thought of that. Maybe we're not here. Maybe we're not the old. Maybe there are other, are other beings out there. Uh -huh. I hope uh, he doesn't punch me. <laughs> just, just yes and him. Yeah. Just yes and him. And um, then we lost him. Oh God! Like David, like where is he? I, That's not we, good. We, we lost him, so it was like losing a, a lion at in, a, a really, in a really party. valuable. Like this guy's, yeah, lost yeah, him, well, and then didn't hear from him until the next day. We had a panel the next day, and it's like did, we don't know is he alive? Did, did where what did, happened? He just wandered. And off. He showed up. And it was yeah, he wandered off, and he showed up the next day. Rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory. Rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory. Rise. And shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. You didn't, you mean he wandered off at this party and you never saw him till the next the day? Party, never, never saw him till the next oh day. Oh my gosh. And when David came back, was he a little like, guys, I asked you to watch him for five minutes while he gets something to eat? Yeah, I think, I think he kind of <laughs> laughed a little bit. Too. Oh, he did. Like, so oh, he wasn't boy. too, this probably wasn't Not the first again. time it had happened to David. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. God, that was a great run for that show. And yeah. uh, what um what's your best takeaway from that experience? That's your most successful project to date. Would you would you agree with that? 
I would agree with that. And what I think about that show is the three of us, me, Hugh, and Rachel, I think we really honed into what our collective voice is. And we also really used our groundlings training for writing. What I mean by that is uh, it was very improvisational. Like, uh, you know, most shows you have to like turn in a a detailed outline. You have to get approval. You have to pitch the show. What's what's this episode going to be? You get, you know, they approve it. They don't approve it. Maybe you have to send in an outline of what, what is the show? Mm -hmm. This we never had that. Well, that might be due partially to Warner Brothers for giving you guys creative license to just go do your thing. And you kind of had to negotiate that. Yeah, I think it was that. It was kind of earned. I think in the beginning, I wasn't there in the very beginning. And I mm-hmm. think in the very beginning, it wasn't as hands off. Um, but by the time I got there, it was kind of, it was. That's pretty great. Yeah, they were, people were, you know, were getting involved and saying no to certain ideas and giving notes, a lot of notes. You hadn't earned that trust yet. Yeah. And then I think once that trust was earned, we were able to write kind of improvisationally, like we would have a, a beginning, maybe like what the mystery was going to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, to start improving the scenes. And one, one of you would play Mike it. and one of you would. Yeah. Like we knew the character so right. well that we were able to kind of improv it as we were writing it. And I think as a result, it was always, it, it, there was no formula to it. It was very surprising. And I think that was, that made the show special. That's cool. Yeah. And four years of that, man, I'm so, I'm just so bummed that, when did you find out that uh, it was not going to get renewed? Uh, I bet, what month is it? I don't even know what month, it's, April? It's April. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the beginning. It's, it's almost May. <laughs> I know, it's almost May. I bet maybe beginning of the year we found out. Yeah. Ah, oh, bummer. Yeah. Well, the show was canceled and that show was produced by Warner Brothers ultimately, right? Warner Brothers right. Animations. Yeah. Are you still working with them? Yes. Okay. We're working with them on a new thing. Okay. Uh, Hugh had kind of an overall deal there. They gave him that. Of course, the, notice they didn't give one to me or Rachel. Yeah. Uh, but What's up with that? Uh, but they want to develop stuff. So there's one thing that we're going to be pitching next week that we've been working on. Okay. You mentioned um, because you, you don't perform anymore. Do you miss, do you have a little itch? Is that uh, a desire to perform in some way, stand up or I don't know, a uh, one person show? You know what it is? I feel like I, uh, I don't know when I would do it. Like, uh, not that I'm so busy, but you know, normally you perform at night. Right. Yeah. And I have kids yeah. and like, by the time they go to sleep, yeah, I'm, I'm so tired. Uh huh. That I I couldn't like go out. We have a thing and I, and for all the listeners, that's my wife. Mm -hmm. We have a thing at nine o'clock on Thursday. Someone's trying to do a, uh, it's like a newlywed game, but it's it's uh, live on over Zoom. And maybe it's like they're trying to pitch this as like a quarantine. I don't know what they're trying to do with it, but they they want to do this. uh, It's interesting. No one wants to do these things just for fun. They want to do. They have it. Everyone's got an angle. Yeah, they want to make a buck. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So we're doing something. It's like a newlywed game, but it's nine o'clock on Thursday. And that's, to me, that seems so late. Whatever, Zoomer. How am, how am I going to do that? <laughs> Remember we used to do a 10 o'clock show, finish at midnight, be yeah. just amped, and we couldn't go to bed till two or three in the morning. Whatever happened yeah, to that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's when I quit groundlings. When I, my first kid, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. But specifically, yeah. Oh, so do, do I? You miss have it? an itch of some. Do you miss performing? And- I like it when I do it. Like I shouldn't say I'd never do it anymore. I once in a while, there's this guy named Eugene Peck, and he writes these scenes, these kind of long scenes, mm-hmm. and he'll put four of them together, and he'll do a night of his scenes. And I guess I'm in sort of his Rolodex of people. So I'll do that show every. You're in his stable of talent. Yeah, maybe like uh, every. Maybe I'll do a show every two or three months. Well, that's that's something. And is it like a table read, or do you actually get in costume and it's a sketch? No, show? you're it, you're holding it. You're reading. Okay, it. okay. But it's like you know, and people show up to these things. So you're it is a performance, but yeah, you're holding you know your papers, and it's always the same thing. Like I, he asked me to do it, I'm like, oh, f- how do I get out of this? I don't want to do it. <laughs> I wish he didn't ask me. But then it's like if he didn't ask me, then I'd be like, oh, I guess I suck. Right. That's why. Damned if you do, Dan. Situation. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, all right, I'll do it. It's three weeks. All right. At least it's not anytime soon. And then it becomes, it, we get close to the time. And I always think, how do I get out of this? What lie can I tell? 
um, to not have to do it. Oh, I don't want to do it. And then I do it and it's, I, I drive home and I'm like, that was great. Yeah. But I never learned my lesson that it's going to be great. Well, I think you as a person, you're sort of a, um, you have a lot of internal angst. Yeah. You have a lot of anxiety. Yes. Yes. Yeah. A lot of anxiety, a lot of self sort of an Albert Brooks, Albert Brooksy sort of yeah, I ang guess. anxiety. I guess. Yeah. Does that drive nuts or, or does, does she know how to, by this time, this is how I deal with it when Larry's getting a little antsy. No, uh, <laughs> she, no. uh, no, doesn't find it cute anymore. It's not endearing. <laughs> See what happens, Larry? I do. <laughs> Cause I don't have to oh, live with it. Nice. Yeah. She doesn't find did. it cute. Does she no. just say, Larry, knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you f a stranger in the ass, Larry. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs>I simply refuse to believe that Larry's wife doesn't find his anxiety just as entertaining, sexy, and attractive as she did when they first met. I just don't buy it. My thanks to Larry Dorf for joining The Modern Moron, and we will check back in with the Mike Tyson Mysteries team to find out about their next project and when we can expect to see it. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, children of the Lord. The animals they came in and to these and to the to these animals they came in and to the and to the to the animal, the animal, the animal, they came in pairs. <laughs> So Noah, he built him, he built him a biggie oaky boat. So Noah, he built him, he built him a bigger oaky boat. He made it out of boards of sturdy oak. Get those animals out of the muddy, muddy. Get those animals out of the muddy, muddy, please. Oh, Jesus, help me with the animals. The Lord said to Noah, there's going to be a floody flood. What the f***? You piece of s***.